Hi, Ryan Tween here, and I want to share a story about really communication and what it breaks down to was air crew coordination. And this is why I'm wearing my cab hat here. Uh, so buckle in for this this ride. Uh, uh, when we had recently got to Afghanistan, we went on a flight and it was uh, it was to the next uh, operating area. So it was over a large mountain chain, but there was a pass in between in between uh, the you know our location and that location. But it took us out of the way to go over. Uh, and this was flying a senior executive uh, to to conduct a meeting. So uh, upon return from that flight, basically we it went from a day flight to a night flight, and this was low visual. I mean, I'm talking no moon. Uh, I'm talking get in a dark room, close your eyes, and then slightly open one eye and look at you know a pinpoint flashlight from the other side of the room. And basically that's what we had to operate with. We were flying from one location through a through a, a mountain chain pass uh to another dot uh light location at another city and uh we were uh the second aircraft in a flight of two and as we departed uh we were flying through that that mountain chain the first aircraft started to come off the route a little bit uh and and the pilot in command looked at me and said what are they doing i said uh, you know i don't know and i said maybe they're just a little bit off course it wasn't too bad and then they kind of continued off course well this area we were operating with was was known bad area had a, a few aircraft shot up and shot down in that area so uh, i said see he said what are they doing i said i don't know let's cue him on the radio so i cue him on the radio no answer cue him on the radio again and, and the junior pilot, so so our air crew was like 900 hours senior pilot, and it was me about 600 hours. Well, their air crew had about a 4,000 hour pilot and a pilot with a couple hundred, I think like 250 hours. So so uh, real senior, but also real junior. Well, that real senior flight uh, uh, leader got got really into spatial disorientation uh, because of all the darkness and not being able to you know know where his body was in space, if you will. So. Uh, Finally, that junior pilot came off and said this the, the the pilot in command had spatial disorientation and he was just trying to maintain the aircraft in flight. So we, I looked at the other, or my pilot in command, and he said, we're going to take over him in flight lead. I said, all right, I told the aircraft, I'm coming up. I have you in visual. I'm going to pass out your right-hand side. Pass out his right-hand side. Well, he loses visual with me because now he's just, again, he's flying with MVGs. He's looking at our one little light on our aircraft, uh, given in a blackness of everything. And uh, so, so he reports that he can't see us. So, so our pilot says, I'm going up full lighting. I said, well, aren't we in a bad area? And he said, yeah, I don't care. I'm not crashing the mountains. I said, mountains? He looks down at our, our, our little moving map that we had, you know, about, the, about twice as big as your cell phone. And, and he goes, yeah, these mountains are, uh, are you know, about uh, 12,000 feet high. I said, okay. Um, and he said, all right, I'm coming up full lighting. I said, roger that. Well, meanwhile, I look down at our at my instruments and I notice I'm at basically 140 knots, which we usually cruised around 110. Uh, and then I'm in a, I'm in 11,000 foot per minute, about 10 degree or 12 degree nosedive. Didn't even know it, couldn't feel it. I also had no reference point. I come inside, I fixed it. Get us back to aircraft level. We're flying, increase my altitude a little bit. And as soon as I look out, I'm searching for a reference point. I have no lights either now. Uh, I come back inside, and I'm already within a few seconds back down to 130 knots. I'm at about a 600 foot per minute rate of descent. And I said, I said, I'm coming inside. I said, I'm flying off instruments. I need you to tell me what to do. I said, I'm just trying to maintain the aircraft at this point. He said, all right, climb up to 13,000. He said, the map says 12.6, so 13 should be good. I said, okay, I'm climbing up to 13.5. All right, and he said, I'm making a right-hand turn. Uh, just keep making a right-hand turn. I said, okay, so I make my right-hand turn, slowly making a right-hand turn, keeping the aircraft level, keeping the aircraft at speed. And, and I said, what's going on? Uh, tell me what you're doing. He said, just keep coming right, keep coming right. And I said, okay, I'll keep coming right, but I really wanna know what's going on. He said, I'm playing video games. And he shows me on the map. I said, video games? He said, yeah, I'm making you do a right-hand turn until we get back to that mountain pass where I can pick up some sort of visual. I said, okay, I'm gonna continue my right hand turn. So I continue my right hand turn and eventually that one little light that was off in the city in the distance uh, comes back into view. I said, I have it, all right? So I'm flying towards that. Now I got I got the physical the physician assistant who just happened to be on a ride in the back said, 
no, we're, 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 we're at unlevel. We're going into a nosedive. And I said, I looked down and really I was so high up in altitude that I was flying forward, but the aircraft was, was basically pointed sideways into the, in, into the jet stream, if you will, or the, or the airflow that was coming off the top of that mountain. So I said, no, we're level. I said, we just, we're, we got a 45 degree heading turn off of the distance that we're flying. We're flying, you know, basically sideways almost or half sideways. He said, I'm all messed up back here. I said, we're good doc. Don't worry about it. And we continued to fly back down that uh, above that valley down to the city, in which point it was a was a huge wide valley, and then we turned down and flew the valley on the rest of the way home. And uh, it really uh, took that coordination, that level of detail, that data analysis, that honesty, um, you know, and the ability to to manage the risk versus reward and what was the worst situation and prioritize what in order to get both helicopters uh, out of that situation. And, and to me, that's why I'm wearing this hat. I mean, it was a significant emotional event as you could probably see uh, and hear in my story, but uh, it really mattered and meant something uh, to me about how we as an air crew communicated to get out of that flight. And I just believe communication is such a vital piece, uh, two-way positive communication uh, in, in any kind of leadership or really any kind of business role. And, and that's what I bring to the table.